What happened to Ron Weasley after he did a doodle of Professor Snape? How did Alan Rickman manage to prove that magic outside of Hogwarts is actually possible? And which secret of Harry Potter did J.K. Rowling reveal only to him? Hello, my name is Dylan. Let's raise our wands for the fifth anniversary of Alan Rickman's death. Fought Harry Potter, but children still loved him. When the Harry Potter family had visitors to the film set, Alan Rickman could be easily recognized by the throngs of children he used to bring to the canteen. It was odd to see an adult actor eating there surrounded by little boys and girls. Even Otter was imagining Severus Snape, this tough villain in his completely black casual robe outfit, chatting with a crowd of happy kiddos. Sometimes there were 300 children on set, so you have to understand what you're in the middle of," the actor said to Empire. There was a particular reason why Alan was so fond of kids. Married to his childhood sweetheart Rima, he always wanted to become a father. Finally, he had to put his dreams aside because his partner didn't want kids. Sometimes I think that in an ideal world, three children aged 12, 10, and 8 would be dropped on us and we would be great parents for that family. So he was there for the little Potter stars, treating them as peers. Daniel Radcliffe said in his heartbreaking tribute, As an actor, he was one of the first of the adults on Potter to treat me like a peer rather than a child. Working with him at such a formative age was incredibly important, and I will carry the lessons he taught me for the rest of my life and career. Rickman even gifted little Dan a copy of his favorite book, The Catcher in the Rye. They were that close. You can tell by reading his thank you letter from Rickman's archive, which was made public. On top of that, his diaries will be published as a book in fall of 2020. We can't wait! Big fan of pranks. What if, and stay with me here, I told you the head of the Slytherin house was very much into pranks? The Potter Dream Team had so many hilarious situations on set, you would never believe it was a serious Hollywood production. Remember that scene in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban where the students are sleeping on the floor of the Great Hall and Dumbledore and Snape are watching Harry? Well, Rickman and Gambone were trying to stay in character when a foreboding silence was broken by… a fart. Yeah, you heard that right. Turns out Radcliffe had asked to be placed next to the girl he had a crush on at the time and, surprise, in order to embarrass him as much as possible, Rickman put a remote-controlled fart machine nearby. He kindly gave the remote control to Michael Gambon. Professor Dumbledore also likes having fun, huh? It all ended up with the whole cast and crew <laughs> bursting into laughter. Just another essential fart, I, I, I mean, part of Rickman's brilliance. Action! For now, let them sleep. We've just done a take, right? We've just yeah. finished a take, and it's taken ages to get it. In our dreams, we enter completely our own world. <laughs> you know, it's completely our own world, and we like to, we like to swim <laughs> in the deepest waters. His method acting could freak out anyone. Alan Rickman always referred to his role as Snape as a punctuation mark in his life. As he told the Los Angeles Times in 2011, Because I would be doing other things but always come back to that, and I was always aware of my place in the story even as others around me were not. Even Chris Columbus, the director of The Philosopher's Stone and The Chamber of Secrets, confessed to being extremely intimidated when he met the ex-star of Die Hard. However, afterwards, he was so pleased to discover what a kind person Alan was when he stepped out of character. It took a couple of seconds after putting his cloak on, and voila, he was walking and talking like Snape, which could freak anyone out. Doodled by Ron Weasley Though associated with his Snape gown, wig, and unmistakable voice, Rickman was the coolest person in real life, a generous soul and a guiding hand for his younger co-stars. Rupert Grint, who played Ron Weasley, called him a great gentleman. In fact, the sweet redhead had the loveliest bond with Alan. An 11-year-old kid at the time, he found the defense against the dark arts professor really scary and once was caught drawing a caricature of him. Quite a typical thing for a child to do, except that he did it to a multi-award winning actor. See how it turned out. But one time's in potion lesson with Snape, who was really scary. Yeah. Um, I was just doodling my quill in the book. I drew this rather unpretty picture of Alan Rickman. And um, as I was drawing it, Alan Rickman was standing right behind me and I was so scared. I made him sign it and I have it in my possession. <laughs> And I'm very fond of it. We remember Alan embodying several villains. As a veteran actor, he didn't have to be a good dude off screen. 
Though he was, by his own choice, a generous friend, a leader, an activist, a mentor, and a kind friend to all the kids of the Harry Potter cast. Realized a terminally ill boy's dream. Do you know the master of potions actually didn't really need any elixirs to make dreams come true in the real world? Listen to this touching story of Paula Dupree Pesman, producer of the first three Harry Potter films and organizer of set visits for terminally sick children. She told several stories of the actors being so sweet with these kids, concluding to Huffington Post, that's the purity of Harry Potter. But one of these visits really felt like experiencing magic outside Hogwarts. This boy's name was Jay. He was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma and couldn't wait to see his favorite actors. Alan Rickman met him and they had a heartwarming talk. It turned out Jay was so knowledgeable about Alan's filmography even beyond Harry Potter. At the end, Jay smiled shyly and added that he's always wanted to be in the film. And so the magic began as Jay then became an extra on the set of The Prisoner of Azkaban during Professor Lupin's Bogart class. Alan looked at me and he kind of went into a Snape mode in costume and said, why isn't this child in the film, told Dupree Pesman. Everyone had a good laugh and Alan took him by the hand and put him into the crowd of kids as they were panning across. The back of him's actually in a shot. While the scene wasn't used in the edit, it made Jay so happy. By the way, the magic didn't stop there. Paula Dupree Pesman then founded There With Care, an organization that helps families with children who are facing serious illnesses. The secret to his poker face in the great hall scenes. Have you ever wondered how Alan Rickman managed to keep his stone cold face sitting firmly at the head of the table during the great hall scenes? How he retained that aura of dark mysteriousness he had? Well, he was listening to his iPod. I started to wonder, what does Alan Rickman as Professor Snape listen to on his iPod? I don't know, I never did ask him, and I wish I had. I'd love to have known, recalled actor Warwick Davis, who played Professor Flitwick. The wig helped the headphones go unnoticed, and the long cape was useful to hide the device he got as a gift from some award show. Young co-stars Oliver Phelps and Ivana Lynch remember him casually asking them to explain how it worked. It was very funny watching how he could go from one minute as Snape to the next minute as Alan Rickman. Very personable, recalls Oliver. Helped design his costumes. It's impossible to imagine Severus Snape without his billowing cape. Costume director Jannie Tamim said it's her favorite one. Alan Rickman himself was involved in developing the idea, knowing there should be a lot of buttons and the sleeves should be sufficiently tight. Remember that scene with Malfoy and Snape and Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince with Rickman in costume crawling on the floor and leaning next to Malfoy's lifeless figure? Tamim recalls, he did that 20 times and 20 times the cape was exactly, precisely draped on the floor in a perfect position. I think you have to be a Shakespearean actor to do that. The sweet costume design team had to let out the enigmatic Snape cape whenever Alan returned from vacation. When he was coming back from Tuscany with a couple of extra kilos, they made it bigger without telling him. Anyways, you can barely find another costume in the Harry Potter movies remaining that largely unchanged. The cape wasn't the only hallmark of Snape's. He also needed black contact lenses to make the transformation happen. Every year, for seven weeks, I would wear black contact lenses, finding an old friend again and a part of myself," Rickman once said. Do you know how it was revealed? Mike Newell, who directed The Goblet of Fire, once complimented Rickman on the unique color of his eyes, to which he responded by popping out one of the lenses. What a shock! These dark contacts helped Rickman feel more unnerving as Snape. He could eat our hearts with a spoon knew the secret behind the always. I bet you won't be surprised if I tell you that Rickman wasn't originally the first choice to play the head of Slytherin. J.K. Rowling herself handpicked him after Tim Roth refused, choosing to act in Planet of the Apes instead. However, it was Rickman who Rowling had in mind to play Professor Snape, which we are so happy about. Only Alan knew the secret of Severus Snape as Rowling revealed it to him the day before the Harry Potter filming began. She certainly didn't tell me what the end of the story was going to be in any way at all, so I was having to buy the books along with everybody else," Rickman said in an RTE interview. It was quite amusing too, because there were times when a director would tell Alan what to do in a scene and he would say something like, No, I can't do that. I know what's going to happen and you don't, producer David Heyman once stated. 
However, he didn't spread the truth around even when the Wizarding Saga was over. Following Alan Rickman's death on the 14th of January 2016, his fans appealed to Rowling to reveal that advice she once gave him before filming. The writer replied, I told Alan what lies behind the word, always. The one who is thought to love the least turns out to be the one who loves the most. Rickman himself has repeatedly said that for him the final part of the Harry Potter story was very important. He used to quote his character's words, When I'm 80 years old and sitting in my rocking chair, I'll be reading Harry Potter, and my family will say to me, after all this time, and I will say, always. Tell us guys, which role makes you miss Alan Rickman the most? What was your favorite Harry Potter moment of his? Give us a hint in the comments, and until next time, stay awesome.